capped off with Joker baptizing LeBron, the Denver Nuggets second half demolition was ridiculous as the Mile High takes a 1-0 series lead in this Western Conference quarter final. Overcoming a 12-point deficit in the blink of an eye, a dominant stretch where the Nuggets went on an instantaneous 10-0 second quarter run that turned into a 20-11 spurt to close the half, put the Nuggets within a possession entering the locker room. The first half was capped off with this beautiful weaving through traffic from Jamal Murray, whose handle skirts through Reeves and Russell like a man amongst boys, which collapses the Laker D, has LeBron in no man's land, and frees up MPJ for Jamal to spot him for a pump and reverse a nasty bit of creation from Murray. Credit to the 39-year-old for hitting this couldn't-be-not-mentioned deep-range bomb to beat the second-quarter buzzer, but generally, the feeling entering the half was that the Lakers let an early start go to waste following a blistering Colorado avalanche. Before breaking down how Denver carried over their momentum into the final 24, including their most pleasantly surprising performer, just 13.9% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe. A tone setter for the Nugs in the second half came from one of this Denver system's key cogs, as when Hachimura is completely out of position for whatever reason, it's Contavious Caldwell Pope time, that's easy money. You get a feel for the most elusive pump fake in the world that literally froze Portland center DeAndre Ayton a few months back. When Jokic baits Davis out to the foul line, AD still gets back to clamp down, but an ever so slight joker drop step and brilliant extension on his post hook fends off Anthony just enough, and he gets an uber friendly roll. Classic Malone offensive flow would commence as a spread ball screen with Gordon in the dunker spot sets the dunk contest runner-up up for a lob. High-low action with the front court allows Felinocious Grew to expose this mismatch in the post with an up fake and twist off his right pivot for a hook. With Darvin Ham running a 2-3 zone, we going ham! This action where Murray finds a passing angle to Jokic features the Lakers doubling Nicola with Dinwiddie and Hachimura, only for Joker to split the double and kick to Caldwell Pope, all while KCP gets a cross screen from Gordon, and it's Contavious getting a Kawhi roll on a glitched corner triple. I'll head over in this direction. Gone to three! It's a route, it's a blow up. It's some bull crap. Mismatched up with the Japanese Rui once again, we see Joker drive to his left and following a Rui reach in, sharply turn the corner for a first step before battering his way to the cup by going right through Rui and floating it home. Watch this MPJ recovery to go from being inverted towards the arc to swiftly picking up Prince. Mike then funnels Tori into the paint with ball pressure and stuns him with this denial. That directly flows into a Jokic pushing of the pace and nifty midair outlet to KCP for a personality altering triple which forces a Darvin Ham timeout and had Ball Arena lit. The assassin from Thomason, Georgia, being Contavious Caldwell Pope, would continue his game swaying ravaging by out of a spinulous action, getting this handoff from Jokic and hitting a triple off the dribble. The most pleasantly surprising performer was DeAndre Jordan, as the critical vibe enhancing locker room voice, whose humbleness is inspiring given all he's accomplished, would play some of the best drop coverage I've seen all year. He accounts for Davis, then latches onto D'Lo just as Russell gets into his layup, while having the intelligence to keep his block in bounds before grabbing the board himself. More DJ in a minute. Jokic would take LeBron into the post, sweep through the stunt of Rui, and get to his spot for this bunny of a fader. Murray would put Reeves on an island, drop step to his offhand, and pull off this lefty finger roll. Anthony Davis initially rejects Murray right here, but the seamless stick to to backtrack to the arc and put AD on an island with a size up and step back that he swishes shows you the Kitchener born killers a pure hooper. DeAndre Jordan would continue to clamp up on defense when it mattered most by again playing elite drop to shut down one Laker attack before holding down Davis in the post and forcing the TO. Following a 7-0 Lakers run, the NBA's best coach in Mike Malone would draw up this ATO that isn't anything fancy but just an effective Murray Jokic spread that gets Jamal downhill to his left. Crunch time Reggie Jackson minutes, where the Nuggets go to another Jokic ball screen, catches Anthony Davis sagging, and it's Bobby Schmurda executing the pick and pop by setting up a double-digit lead extending Joker bomb. Empty side Joker blue arrow DHO has all five Lakers' attention. 
LeBron is going to bring the help, but Reeves is slow to rotate out to LeBron's man. Austin still makes a solid contest, but MPJ is unfazed, and a 7-point lead is extended back to double digits. Jokic blitzes the passing lane to intercept this LeBron swing, before turning his steal into a halfway poster of LeBron, as after pass faking to MPJ, Nikola pulls out of a jam at the last second to lay it home, pull out game strong. Clear out for Aaron Gordon sees AG hezzy right and pull off this beastly post spin where he ends up getting 2-0 boards for his trouble. The reigning champs showed us how you protect a lead in this league by executing with ball control, pace of play, while most importantly relying on your defense, as the Nuggets forced two embarrassing misses around the basket from Davis and James consecutively. Directly after that, Jokic springs off LeBron in the open court to receive this Gordon outlet before two-handed hammer it on LeBron's head for a storybook-esque Serbian posterization. What speaks to the Nuggets' recent tearing apart of the Lakers is that the Nuggets became the first team in NBA history on Saturday night to beat a single opponent in nine straight games despite taking at least four fewer free throw attempts in every game of the streak. Denver's taken 130 free throws over this winning streak to the Lakers' 204. In Game 1 specifically, the Nuggets shot merely 6 free throws, yet still ended up with a comfortable double-digit victory when it was all said and done. Another insane fact for you about last year's champs is that since acquiring Aaron Gordon 3 years ago, Denver has never lost a single regulation game against a Western Conference opponent at home in which all 5 starters start and finish the game. They've gone 37-0 when that happens. After dropping 32 points, 12 boards, 7 dimes, and 2 steals, Joker would say in his courtside interview postgame, just trying to win the game, don't force it, try to find the open guy and trust the pass, trust the teammates. From Hooper to movie star, Jokic would star in this trailer for Despicable Me 4, poking fun at his resemblance to protagonist Gru, which when asked about he'd say, I love Gru, love the guy, and love the cartoon. All five Nuggets starters scored at least 12 points, while conversely, on the other side, Denver's defense clamped down to hold the Lakers' third leading scorer, D'Angelo Russell, to just 6 for 20 shooting from the field. Outside of LeBron and Anthony, the other seven Lakers that suited up combined for just 44 points, which won't cut it. With that said, based off how the Denver Nuggets took over the second half, I want to know in your opinion, was this a statement win for the Mile High City? Best answer gets next video's commenter shout out, your boy DFlow signing off.